Hey everybody, this is Johnny Van Zandt from Leonard Skinner with my guard dog Chanel. We like watching Stir in the Pot with Dennis Aloya, Chris Massey, Jerry Farmer, and Matthew Schwartz. Anyway, we're going to stir the pot, stir the pot on American Hearts Radio, Web TV. Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to uh, the second edition of our world-famous, now world-famous show, Stirring the Pot. Uh, this is a politically incorrect show. We don't have any holes barred. We started this little adventure last month. We had a lot of people that really liked the, the concept, so we decided to continue with it for the foreseeable future. Uh, I am going to be your uh, moderable host, Dennis Saloya. The moderator of the show tonight is Mr. Matthew Schwartz, a licensed attorney in Georgia and also Mr. Chris Massey of the Chris Massey Band, World Famous Entertainers. And later we'll have another guest on, uh, Jerry Farber, who's a legend comedian here in Atlanta. Uh, but first of all, I'd like to turn my attention for a moment over to my good friend Matt to introduce our new format, new being different from last month. Matt? So the format that we're now doing is called the Tag Team Moderator. And what that means is I'll be the moderator. I'm going to be a neutral party, and I'm going to introduce issues to the two disputers and they'll each have um, some dedicated time where they alone will be able to address the issue for one minute or two minutes and then the other side will have the same and then it's going to turn into kind of a conversational format but during the conversational format discussion at any time either side can pick up a dollar bill and retain me as a professional advocate <laughs> what a to supplement their <laughs> argument so if I get retained by Chris in the middle of the of the discussion even though, here's a disclaimer for everybody, I am a dedicated conservative, but, uh, and Chris is our resident progressive. So if, if uh, Chris retains me, I will be doing my best to supplement his argument with the progressive side. And if, uh, if Dennis retains me, I will do my best to tell the truth. And you got a oh, you got a you got, you got a lawyer here claiming that he's going to be fair. This yeah. is the best you could do. This is good. This is I mean, why didn't we just show, get somebody all. at the quick trip <laughs> and, and, and bring just, them over just here? Just give me a shot, Chris. Just give me a shot. Yeah, I know Have what side. Back. I know what side you're leaning. <laughs> you're, not, you're not fooling me, pal. All right. All right. That said, we're going to start with our first issue, and our first issue is as follows: Is there a correlation, Dennis, between Democrat-controlled cities? and urban blight. Go. I'm glad you asked me that, Matt. I just happen to have here a few facts that I ran uh, yesterday off the internet, actually. It won't take but a couple of minutes to read this, but I think everybody Good, out there... because that's all you have is a couple thank of minutes. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> I entitled this Democratic Disaster Cities. I'm going to rank them by the poverty level, and this came off of a CNN poll, folks. This is not mine. Number one, of course, is Detroit. Number two, Buffalo, New York. Um, Number three, Cincinnati, Ohio. By the way, let me back up. Detroit's had a Democratic mayor since 1961. Buffalo has had a Democratic mayor since 54. Cincinnati's had a Democratic mayor since 84. Cleveland, Ohio has had one since 89. Miami, Florida's next on the list at number five. They've had a Democrat in office forever. St. Louis is next. They've had a Democrat in office from ni since 1949. El Paso, Texas is number seven. They've had a Democrat in office forever. Milwaukee's uh, number eight. Uh, at 1908 is the last time they had a Republican. Uh, number nine is Philadelphia. In 1952, they've had Democrats running the city since that point. And last but not least, world famous Newark, New York. Since 1907, folks, they've had Democratic leadership. These are all the top ten cities mired in poverty. Uh, also, uh, cities with Democratic leadership in power for the last 40 to 50 years. I've mentioned some of them, but we also skipped a few. Chicago, Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, uh, and I think those are the ones we skipped. What do they all have in common? Number one, high amounts of federal money have been poured into the cities, billions with a B since the 60s. High crime rate, 
high homicide rates, high taxes, high rate of lost business and people moving, high welfare rolls, lowest reading levels. Washington, D.C. students read a 83%, read at a lower level than 83% of the folks in the country. And that's also uh, all of the uh, unions that they have backing up the teachers here are something that needs to be looked at at another show. This last little point is important to me because I used to do this job. Uh, Washington, D.C. has the, the slowest police response time, on average, 58 minutes versus the national average of 11 minutes. Okay, we're out of two minutes now. Thank you. Those are my points. Those are the talking points for whether or not there's a correlation between Democratic-controlled governments and urban blight. And here with the response is our resident progressive. Well, where uh, where's the list of all the Republican cities that are doing so good? We're only talking about Democratic cities and urban oh. blight. No, oh, but, no, but no, wait a minute. No, no, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're, you, you're saying that the, that the Democrat cities are so bad, but you're not giving me any examples of Republican cities that are doing so wonderful. Well, I'll make it real simple. Wait, wait. He gets to he oh, gets he does for two minutes. Now, now yeah. as, you, as you well may know, <laughs> that the majority of these cities, including Detroit, when they really took a turn for the worse, was after George W. Bush got through with his uh, presidency or whatever you want to call it. At the end of 2008, property values dropping. Unemployment went from 5% to 10%. Okay. And all these t- all these years you're talking about, there were plenty of Republican presidents mm-hmm. when, when these people had these uh, de- Democratic mayors. Mm-hmm. Okay. Fact of the matter is, is that low-income housing is, is, in, is in the cities just like it is in Atlanta. Crime rate is higher, just like it is in any city. There's not a city, there's not a big city anywhere where where that's not where uh, the high the highest crime rate is. Crime is an economic issue. Is this two minutes up yet? It is now. Thank mm. you. Uh, first of all, you're wrong on a couple of points, Chris. Number one, Detroit, up until 1960, was having a lot of middle class people earning a very good living making cars. Okay, that's right. And in, in, in 1960, G- Detroit uh, elected their first Democratic Socialist mayor, mm-hmm. and they haven't had a Republican in office since 1960. And you notice the downtrend since the Democratic mayor took took over and the subsequent Democratic uh, uh, regimes. That's the correlation, okay, between Democratic Socialism and poverty and high crime and keeping people in chains literally by putting them on welfare instead of creating good paying jobs like they had when the auto industry was going well. And when but the Democratic people have taxed business to the mm-hmm. point that they've left the country in a lot of cases. Who was president when the auto uh, industry hit the skids? 1960 there? would have been John Kennedy. No, when, it, when we had to have the auto bailout, what, who was president then? The auto bailout? You talk about George Bush, right? George Bush, exactly. Why did they need a bailout? Because General Motors was going belly up. Yeah, why is that? Because of union wages, number one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Because of government regulation, now, number two. You tell. Do you want me, to go on? Yeah. You tell me what happens in this country if there are no unions. What happens? Number one, we would be highly more productive. That's right. Number two, the Democratic base would lose about two thirds of their uh, contributions. Uh, number three, people would have a real choice instead of being bullied into joining a union. Mm. And number four, the thing about unions is they were needed in the 30s when there were sweatshops, but they have long ago outlived their usefulness. That's right. So you think so you think that if there were no unions, that people would still get paid vacations, weekends off, overtime pay, and decent wages? Why not? Well, here's why: because rich people, rich people are all about making the most money possible. But That's why they're shipping jobs overseas right now, so they can pay less. And if there weren't unions over here making them pay more, they'd be paying less right here in the good old United States. But of America. we're not talking about unions. We're talking about the Democratic cities and the correlation between them and the high rates of poverty in the cities that they've run for over a generation. I can't think of a Republican mayor or regime that has been in charge of any city in this country. For a generation, if you can, please tell me what city that might be. Thank well, you. Well, Atlanta. I'm done. Well, when was the last time Atlanta had a Republican uh, mayor? I haven't lived here long enough to answer that question. I don't think it's been uh, since uh, Maynard Jackson was in 1980. He wasn't Republican. He was Democrat. Yeah. So well, could, Atlanta's not on that list. Well, Atlanta's got a very high poverty level as well, but they didn't make the top ten. They might be number eleven. Oh, oh, oh. 
inner cities have a poverty level. But, but the point, Chris, is why is that? Why is that? I mean, why look. You, why don't you let me? I, I mean, look. I mean, look. They, they, the they, they, have, they, they have they have a high poverty now, level in Dallas. They got a Republican. a Republican. Now, now listen. Place. Stick to the plan here. I'm gonna. I need a moderator to explain my part that Chris doesn't get. Normally I would. I'd yes. love to be retained, yes. but we've now reached the second segment. Well, let's just continue this. <laughs> you want to continue? Yes, because okay. I think it's a very important subject. Okay. Our cities are important in this country, and the people in them, they need a lot more than money and welfare. They need some job opportunities to get them out of poverty. Let's, let's, go, on, let's go, go on to the next topic. I mean, look. You, but we, we didn't answer your question. Look. You you made you made your point. You've got cities on there that have Democratic mayors that are in bad shape for a generation or more. Okay. So nobody if, nobody is going to sit here and tell you that people that live in the inner city that there's not poverty in the inner cities. All right, I'll, I'll, and that's I'll, any city. You I'll, show me one city in the United States that doesn't have that. All right, here's my bottom line point. This has been going on for a generation. If we elect Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton, they're going to take that same socialist formula and put it across the United States. I don't think good cities that are not in that situation want to get in that situation. Therefore, vote correctly come November. I'm done. Okay. Next, now, next we're, we're on the next, next subject now. Um, is there, and we're going to start with Chris. Chris, sure. is there any federal gun legislation that you would propose that you think would help this country? And if so, what is that legislation? I think there should be background checks for anybody purchasing a weapon. I don't think any, just any, anybody should be able to, uh, I think owning a gun is a privilege. And um, uh, if you're going to own a gun, then you should be able to pass a background check. Plain and simple. Now, I know the right thinks that the left wants to take all their guns away and have no guns in this country. I've never heard any politician say that. And uh, having background checks with the way things go, are going down in this country, is, I think, is just a smart thing to do. This thing about they want to take all your guns, that's just propaganda from the NRA, you know, that doesn't want any legislation on it. And would it, would it solve all the problems? No. But it would save lives every year if we had background checks. But it's not going to save them all. Dennis? I have a, uh, I can kind of agree with Chris on the background checks. I don't see a problem. If you're a law-abiding law citizen, it shouldn't be an issue. But the other side of that coin is the general population out there does not trust our government, okay? So when they try to get one little step in the door regarding to guns and the Second Amendment right to carry, if you're a good citizen, they figure that might open the door to some other changes. Example, Obama recently said he'd like to put a $25 per box tax on every box of ammunition sold. Okay, so what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? A <laughs> yeah. box of 410 ammunition we're costs 20, $11. We're $20 trillion in debt. I think putting $25 Oh, you think that's what? fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a good, I, mean, I mean, look, why, why, why do people have to have enough arsenal in their house to start a war for crying out loud? Example. This morning there was a guy that walked into a 7-Eleven, and this was on the Drudge Report, and he had an axe, by the way. Right. He hit the clerk in the arm with the axe. Mm -hmm. He was about to hit him again. There was a customer in the store. Right. When the customer, who had a carry permit, pulled out his gun and promptly shot him to death. Okay. How many bullets did it take? One. Okay. There's my point That's right there. a great there. shot. That's my point. That was a great shot. That's my point right there. So there's my point. If the guy was unarmed, he would have been victim number two of the axe killer, along with the clerk. So you see, there is some common sense for having a carry permit yeah, and being but, able to have yeah. your Second Amendment right. But look, there, 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 there's a flip side to everything just on the news the other night. What's the I, flip side? You're a A nine-year-old nine kid shot his three-year-old brother right here in Atlanta. That's the parents' problem because Can they somebody didn't put the guns me? up. Can somebody retain Yes, go ahead. Oh, I thank you very you. much. <laughs> oh, Please, you get uh, to keep the dollar? Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> Please be advised I've been retained by Mr. Alloy. You didn't tell yeah. me that part. Okay, okay. <laughs> so basically a nine-year-old shooting a three-year-old is not going to be prevented by uh, forcing people to register. Register. And and most of the people that are committing crimes uh, are criminals themselves who are not acquiring weapons legally anyway. They're stealing them from other people. They're getting them by illicit means. And the uh, owning a, a gun, uh, as the Supreme Court recently said in, in the Heller decision, is not a privilege. It's a right. It's a constitutionally guaranteed right as much as it is somebody's right to vote or to free speech or to practice their religion. It's a constitutionally protected right. And the issue is not so much of what, what do you need guns for or why do you need high rounds, uh, a high round, high capacity round uh, weapon, uh, because it's why do you need to speak? Why do you need to vote? You don't need to. These are rights that are guaranteed by the Constitution. We don't have to, okay. we don't have to um, 
to make a showing about why we need to exercise these rights. We just, we, we're entitled to them. Well, let me ask you this. If owning a gun is a right, then why can it be taken away from you? If you commit a felony, you are not allowed to own a gun. Because, period. Privileges are taken away, no, not rights. Not, that's You're not right. True. You can not can true. my right to free speech be ever taken away? Yes, sir. Absolutely. How? How about if you go to jail? How about if you're punished because you're yelling fire in a in a crowded theater? No right is completely unqualified. That doesn't mean that they're not rights and privilege. Instead, they're privileges. They're rights, but they have qualifications. Now, if you want to talk about what the qualifications should be on the right uh, to to own weapons, and I would agree that that it's not unqualified. And 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 for example, I would say that um, people should not be able to own an atomic weapon. Okay, that's obviously. I have a problem with that. I know. I'm you kidding. <laughs> so, so it should be qualified. But the question is, at what point do you draw that line? Okay, and, and now we know, just like any constitutional analysis goes, you have to weigh the different interests. We know, we know what the interests are on your side. Mm. The interest on your side is public safety. Right. We don't want to have weapons nearly willy around with everybody so that people could be shooting people up or exploding things. But what's the other interest that's the competing interest? Because that's the one that people forget. The competing interest with that is that the people have to have the ability to mount an effective resistance against tyranny if this government should become tyrannical. Now, when you weigh those two things together, okay, on one okay. side, what's the, what do we need to keep this pe the people safe? And then what do the people need to put an mount an effective resistance against a tyrannical government? I think you see that nobody really needs atomic weapons. and well, According nobody to that, they do. No, they don't. You don't need an atomic you, you weapon. You got to... to, to, uh, to uh, to uh, defend yourself against the uh, country, if they come in tyranny, they got nuclear weapons. If you ain't got, and all you got are guns, how are you gonna defend yourself? You don't. The the, the country is not gonna shoot a nuclear bomb against its own people. But <laughs> look, <laughs> well, you know, maybe, maybe nobody thought Hitler would exterminate six million Jews. We have either. seen through history. You know? We have seen through history that people can mount an effective resistance against tyranny without the use of nuclear weapons. You can do it. It, was, it happened in uh, in a lot of countries recently where. And I'm not even sure if they've had nuclear weapons, but the point is that you need more than a handgun. You probably need even automatic weapons. And on the other side, I think it'd be atrocious if anybody could just own uh, germ warfare, you know, uh, uh, Ebola. Probably gonna, you're probably going to need an airplane that drops some bombs. You know, if the mil look, if the military decides to take over this country. Mm -hmm. There aren't enough guns in this country to, to, to do anything. There aren't enough people in the military to take over this country. That's right. Tell you what, there it aren't would, enough it people. Would take a, it would take a few bombs to hit Atlanta to decimate this whole place. Put us out of business. No water, right. no electricity, right. nothing. And, 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 and unless and somebody who, shooting, shooting that, planes out of the know, sky. Why, but uh, how do you know that the people that are mounting the, the resistance are in Atlanta? They could be all over. They could be anywhere. Do they have a plane with bombs? They don't the, need the capacity to shoot a plane down? They don't need it. Just ask those people over there in the Middle East how they do with no planes <laughs> when we come over there. So let me get this right then. Your argument is that people should not own guns because it could lead to them getting nuclear weapons and that would come no. under the same second what amendment? I, what I said was was that there should be background checks for, for people buying guns. And these, I agree with gun you. shows, anybody can go there and they can buy them. And look, and it's, it's, just, it's just like what we were talking about. Yeah, here's the deal is this. You're not going to, with background checks, you're not going to stop everybody. But you are, it's just like the cop on the expressway. Everybody's speeding. He ain't going to stop everybody. But if he starts pulling a few people over, he's going to slow a few people down. And that's what background checks would be. And what are you going to check to see for the background? Well, clearly, you can find out if somebody's got a felony. But but really, if you look at most of the uh, the mass shootings that I think is driving this push for gun mm -hmm. control legislation, they're not necessarily felons. In fact, most of them are not felons. They're nuts. How much you they're spent? Insane. Well, that's what I'm saying. If you spent but, time uh, in the cuckoo house, you shouldn't be getting a gun. Well, okay, okay, is that the standard that you've been put in a cuckoo house for how long? Because, you know, a lot of states have rules that anybody could just say that somebody's acting strange and they could be abducted and put into a, a sanitarium for observation period, uh, observation purposes only for three days and they could be released and there was nothing wrong with them. It's just that somebody happened to accuse them. Okay, if you, if you had to stay for an extended period of time, if you've got a, uh, a, a uh, schizophrenic di diagnosis, you know, they, they, they could come up with some kind of guidelines they could use. Okay, now if we go through all the people who have con committed these mass uh, shootings, I think you'll find that most of them, with the exception of maybe the guy in Colorado, Aurora, Colorado, did not ha suffer from schizophrenia. So who's to say, who's going to set the standards for what constitutes sufficient insanity 
that it really poses a, a threat to the public that, to the point where you could take somebody's constitutionally guaranteed rights away. That's Ooh. a real, real tricky question. It is a tricky I question. I think we're coming up on our uh, break time here very shortly. Yeah, do we, we have one, enough we have time, for, time one more, for one more uh, issue? Yes, we do. And then we're going to break, folks. Last and then we're issue. Come back. This is a kind of a very timely one. Okay. And I'm going to start it off with Chris. Okay. Chris, Donald Trump, do you think that he's going to win the Republican nomination for the office of the president? No. Why not? Well, one, I, I, don't, I don't think he'll get to 1237. And two, um, I don't think they're going to give it to him. I, I, I think basically, I mean, look, in the polls right now against Hillary or Bernie, he's losing. Okay? And I think, I think they're going to say, um, uh, what are you laughing about? That's true. I'll wait for my turn. That's true. Bernie, and Bernie's beating him worse than Hillary is. And um, uh, when they get to the, uh, when they get to the convention, they'll, they'll say, well, you know, uh, we're going we're to take it on the chin, and we're going to pick somebody else. I have a question. If Bernie Sanders gets a Democratic nomination, would you vote for him? Over any of the Republicans running? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, I rest my case. Absolutely. I rest my case. How is that resting your case? Uh, look, <laughs> listen, I'll you let the audience figure case. that out. No, you're, you're here to make the okay, case. Okay, well, make look, the case. we'll get back to Trump momentarily. See, that, like that's, that's the problem with you Republicans. You think you guys are, are the vast majority in all this stuff. I just and know what and, a communist and, looks and, like, and, that, and, and that's apparently what, you and, don't. And that's what happened when, uh, when, when Romney got beat. Would you Everybody like, was so sure, why, sure. Why don't you go find a communist that lived behind the Iron Curtain and talk to them people about living in that regime? I've got a guy that lives in so, my neighborhood. So free health care and, and free education is communist. No, no. But, you yes, know, it is. Yes. To a large degree. But they also, you know, kill 20 million of their own people. But that's for another show. Back to, uh, what's his name, Mr. Trump? Yes. It looks like he's rolling his way to the nomination. He's not my first pick. I'm a Cruz guy, but I will support him because he's not a Democrat and he's not a Republican. You know what he is? He's, he's a idiot. doer. <laughs> he's a doer. He gets things done. It, you know, there, nobody, will be, there will be impeachment proceedings against Trump the first three months he's if in Obama, office. Look, Obama should have been impeached in his first term, okay? Mm. Yeah. Now, we don't want to get onto that subject right now because no, I'll get very talking, emotional. Talking about Donald Trump. But I can tell you Trump will probably get the nomination. Uh, and one, last, one last fact about this. I have a friend, his dad, actually, that worked at the polls for the primaries. And for every 100 Republicans that came out to vote, there were about 50 Democrats. Or, no, for every 100, there was two Democrats. That was the ratio. The Republicans have gone over the top with people voting in the primaries across the country. There's, there's actually quite what a does lot that of, tell you? There's actually quite a, quite a Donald, lot of statistics showing Donald that. Donald Trump will lose badly. Wait, wait. wait. Okay. Ted Cruz That's your will lose. Ted Cruz will lose badly. They're, they're if both. you want to win, they're going to have to pick somebody at the convention. Marco Rubio runs the best. John Kasich is the Republicans' best shot to win. And actually, if John Kasich was president, I could live with that. Well, I'll tell you I, I think what, he's got. I think he's got some 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 good ideas, and he's not uh, and he's not crazy right. If you know? uh, if Hillary or Bernie Sanders wins, you better start invoking your Second Amendment because mm. you're going to need it. Yeah. The, I the, think we're up on a hard break. Let me just one make one point. Uh, <laughs> if you look at the statistics, it's what what Donald Trump has done. If he wins the nomination, is he brings a lot of people to vote who have not voted before. And if you look at the voting trends in the Democratic Party, a lot less people are voting because they're not as enthused about this election as they were when President Obama You cannot was. win the presidential election with a split party. The, the party that unifies the best behind their candidate is the one that will win. And the Republicans and when, will do that. When no, all they won't. Yeah, like they did against Romney. You had five million people that stayed home because he was a Mormon, for crying out loud. No, because he was a moron. You, you were got, close. You got, you got, <laughs> you got 60 percent of people in America. I mean... I, I, I just don't see it. When Bernie goes out, he's going to endorse Hillary. He's going to so he's going to uh, ask all his supporters Wonderful. to endorse her. That he he is going to be a keynote speaker at the convention. And I'm telling you. And the other thing is this: demographically, you're uh, you're, you're losing women. You're losing young people. You're using uh, uh, blacks, Hispanics, gays. We'll see. Union. You got all them people coming to the Republican. By the way, so there's, there's not enough white. Trump, there's not enough white people to elect Donald Trump. When Hillary you gets indicted. It. You have Trump a lot of black people jail. supporting Donald Trump. You have a lot of legal no, Hispanic not. immigrants that are supporting Donald Trump. Folks, mind. I hate to uh, break into this wonderful time we're having, uh, but I'm sure you love this segment. But we're going to have to take a short, hard break and uh, do a commercial, and we're going to come back with a gentleman named Mr. <laughs> Jerry Farber. Chris, thanks for coming, I think. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, call me. Bad company. Yes. 
check out our new app on American Hearts Radio. Yes, it is really cool, man. You can listen to some rock and roll and some Motown. Yes, it is the Novax app free on AmericanHeartsRadio.com. It's really easy to use. You go to the website, www.AmericanHeartsRadio, and then you you'll see our app that says for, for the, the Android or the, the iPhone. Just download that for free. And you can listen to all the music on American Arts Radio. Also, you can watch our web television shows. This is Enos Mohammed Baba, the redneck Muslim. See you later. arguing off camera for a few minutes. Uh, my next guest is Mr. Jerry Farber. He, thank you. Uh, thank you, Jerry. Uh, thank you. Thanks for being here. You're already getting your retainer funds uh, available there. To, all my to get Mr. Bill Schwartz to represent your side of the issue. Oh, I uh, yeah, I'll let you count it all up. I, uh, I only got a dollar here. Jerry's got no, about 150. A <laughs> but uh, anyway, you're going to need an attorney by the time I get done with you. All right. First, anyway. uh, first issue. First issue. Yes, go ahead. Introduce this one it. is for Mr. Farber. Jerry, yes. is health care a guaranteed right in the United States, and if not, should it be? It, well, let's start the second. Absolutely should be. Look at the rank, if we can have time to do it. We rank, I believe it's 27th or 31st, but we're way down among other countries. Granted, we're a lot bigger, but we should. We're supposed to care about humans. I love to be around my Christian and Jewish and Muslim friends, too. Both neighbors are Muslims, and where I live in is called Midtown. There happens to be a great source of humanity there. We should care about the other people. We don't want people dying on the streets. Yes. Yes. I was all for a, a single payer, by the way. But, yes, health care should be a, a, an education of our children. That's the future. It's not the billionaires. It's how we're going to do with the ones yet to be born. Otherwise, we have no future. That is the future. Okay. So, yes, I do think we should have... Mr. Loy, a counterpoint. Uh, my, my position on health care is that's what Medicaid was created for in the cities, to help the people that, you know, were in the poverty uh, areas and needed health care. That's what Medicare is, Medicaid is for. So it's, it's already been there. As far as being a right... It's not in the Bill of Rights to have health care. It never, never was, never has been. In all of my adult life, when I've had children to raise and everything else, I had to pay for health care out of my pocket. And I think the way to do it is to open it up to competition where insurance companies can come across the states and offer good, competitive, competitively priced policies. That's the way to do it. Nothing is free. If somebody gets something for free, somebody else is paying for it. And I disagree completely with that socialist stand. You were there when the Bill of Rights was created. I, I was. wasn't. It was in the 1700s. That's right. Everything changes. The whole point of being human, we are pliable, and we have to be transparent and be capable to accommodate the circumstances. These are different circumstances now. Slavery was legal at one time. Are you aware of that? Mm-hmm. Okay. It was legal. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's no longer legal to have slaves, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, health care is a big issue. Not the middle class. We are struggling. I'm a part of a middle class. I'm making the low middle five figures, low middle. Now, I have, fortunately, I have Medicare. I've lived long enough to have it. I paid for my health insurance. But those that don't, let me ask you a question, if I may. What does Christianity mean, if it means anything, if it's not to take care of the ones that aren't able to take care of I got of an themselves? answer for that. No, I want the answer from you. When my parents were... You don't uh, want it from Not you? your parents. Oh, yeah. No, generally. <laughs> generally. Generally. Generally speaking, before, not your parents who I know are great people. Before you all are. Of, you're a police officer. Before all But the least. ones who are falling down, wait a minute, and a lot of our soldiers <laughs> don't have it. They come back. We love them. We talk about them on, the, on television shows. But how do we really help them? Well, before all of these big social welfare programs came mm -hmm. into existence, people used to go to the churches for help mm -hmm. back in the 30s still and do. 40s. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to let Mr. Window. Schwartz interject with his uh, take on this, because I think it's a very Thank good very uh, subject. You're welcome. Well, all right. If it's money, I'm waving more money than you. <laughs> <laughs> you will have a chance to retain me after I finish this point. All right. Um, so if health care is a right, you have, to want, you have to ask why is it a right? And I think you would say, as, as a lot of your colleagues would say, is that because you need it. Is it no. because you need it? Can I interject? Yes, please. 
we're supposed to be a caring... Nothing means anything if we don't have regard for our other fellow humans. Well, regard... We're falling through cracks. Okay. If you think that health... If you have regard for your fellow humans, mm-hmm. it means you have regard for their needs. I imagine that's why you I would want them to have health care. Yes, I do. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. so... If you're going to say that they should have a right to health care, then you're going to have to also say that they have a right to food and they have a right to shelter and they have a right for everything that they need. And before you know it, you're in a communist country. Because when you provide for everybody's needs, you have a totalitarian regime that controls everybody. You have no freedom. Stop there. Wait, wait, let me me finish. No, I've heard enough. You haven't heard the... We don't let people die on the streets. And if we do, we are worth it. And, and we are worse than any of the other countries. I don't see anybody dying you know on the street. Yes, you do. Where? Because you have to feed people. I belong, I don't know what shelters you do. I'm a board member of one for 30 years called the Task Force of the Homeless. There are 800 people in my shelter tonight. A hundred of them or more are soldiers. And you know what? Who feeds them? You don't and you don't. Two black churches in downtown Atlanta feed That's our great. people. That's what they're there it's for. It's great, yeah. But if they don't, then do they die? No. What do you do about it? What do I do? Yeah, what if do you do about it? If they want some food, I'll give them some food. I always You give contribute. them some food. Of Who course. do you give food to? Where do you do? Uh, you know, if they want At it, your I church? It. Do you think yeah, they have a right? shelter? Wait, 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 there's no, there's no Christianity no, involved. We, they have take, to be two taking, churches. Why do you have the right to tell other people what they have to do? I know. I'm saying what I do. No, 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 no. You want to impose it on everybody. You want to say, look, I think that everybody should be taken care of. Therefore, I think you should pay for it. Okay, if you want to give all your money away to take care of other people, that's fine. I'm asking you, do you let them die? Some people will die of hunger. People do die of hunger. That won't happen because there's enough charitable... You don't have to be a doctor to know people die of hunger. There's enough charitable places and churches in this country where that doesn't happen. You can't prove it by me. I belong to one for 20... I want to take you to a shelter where there are 800 people, women and children, not 30 people that the Catholic Church does. Two black churches. That's do. fine. Yeah. They're doing their job. And and we don't know how they do it. I nor agree do we with ask, Right? They, and they're I doing have it because the stores you know, have a lot the of food that they've like, got left over. Nice, not, mostly why white. Do, nice why do you have to impose say, it why on don't we can't, Why can't we but move Jerry, them let, him, let him finish his point. From a logical yeah. standpoint, not an emotional standpoint. Right. It, it what, isn't emotional. I mean, we are passionate people. We're not... We're not... We're not... When you have to have passion and logic. When you think with your heart and not with your brain, you wind up killing tens of millions of people. That's how I will break it. You kill tens of millions of people, okay? Because be, because there have been countries that have been formed and became totalitarian on that premise. We need to take care of people. Exactly. And that's what happened in the Soviet them. Union. And how many people died in Soviet Russia? And how many people were murdered in China? How, how many, many people, people were, murdered were lynched in, Cuba? in this America of not yours? Not because of communism. Think, not because well, of communism. people that didn't care or excuse didn't me, know are you, Excuse me, Jerry. you really think that there's any... Do you know any, what the Civil Jerry, War let me was? No, no, let's Jerry, go back no, Jerry, a little bit. No, Jerry, you're interrupting me. Do you really think there's any... The number of people who were, quote, lynched in this country, do you think that has any comparison at all most to the does. 28 million it's people humanity. that Stalin it's murdered. Talking about no, no, no. Humanity. You, you, know, you want to murder people with your humanity, okay? Because that's the end goal. You don't have to who, give a nickel if you don't want to. No. I won't let them die. You can let them die. You won't give a nickel. No, you're trying to impose... The I didn't say you have to give a nickel. I'm saying that two black churches. Where is the feed government going to get the money to pay for everybody's health care? Hopefully, food? from people like you. So you are taxes. telling me not just a nickel, it's going to be thousands of dollars. You can of take money. a nickel off so your I nuclear weapons, and be able you can help the I don't people. have nuclear weapons, but I do have, have, have a few here. thousand dollars. Our president said we can blow up the country. Al, it's your turn. Jump in here. Our President Obama said, and he said it right. We can blow to the right wing. Said we can blow up the world if that's what you want, or we can try to talk. The only thing that separates us from lower life forms is we can talk. We can civilize. That's what we can do. We've already but got you're weapons. You're your mind to the logical yeah. argument. Yeah. See what happens. Your There's no logic argument. when it comes to starving people or we're, children. We're not saying you let them ignore starve. No logic. We're you're not ignoring, saying wait, that. You're ignoring history, okay? You're ignoring what happened in Soviet I Russia. I think you're, you're ignoring, ignoring stop, history. Stop, 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 please yeah. stop interrupting me. If you're ignoring what happened in Soviet Russia. You're ignoring what happened in China. You didn't ask me China. if I'm ignoring Russia. I know a lot about my people came from Russia. How many people did Stalin kill in the name of communism and taking care of people? Almost as many as Hitler. Why there did your people million. leave? No, 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 more people. So no, no, not more, more people. than 60 million. Really? That's what we lost. Yeah, it was 60 20, million. 28 in that million war. people were killed in Russia, Soviet Russia. There were 60 million killed from Germany in that war we have with Germany. 60 where, million where, in the war, where, but not by Germany. Where Russia okay. happened to be an ally and won that war at the Battle of Stalingrad. The Germans you know were part of the 60 You know a little history? I Germany, the war with Germany and Japan cost us 60 million casualties. That's a war. I'm talking about Fortunately, communism. Fortunately, we had Russia I'm talking about a single government. 
that killed its own people in the name of communism. China, Angola, okay. Cuba. Let me, let me it's tell an you. endless list of countries. How many and humans why do you do think you that think? that's not going to change? Let me ask you, lawyer, how many people were killed in America happened to be dark-skinned, not your people, were slaughtered in America? What does that have to do with communism? Well, it has to do with humanity is what it has to do with. I, of course, it has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Well, how does <laughs> it not have to do with what we're talking because about? Because I'm talking about because people how didn't communism... Care. We're because, talking no, no, about no. caring as a human. Oh, and the people it's cared. So for, they cared in the Soviet Union, and they killed 28 million people. They and cared they, in China, and they killed uh, they, about 50 million people. What would you have us collect, do then? They collectivized. Freedom. The answer is freedom. Yeah. The answer Ask is not the people slavery. that are homeless and have no job. We you do me a favor. We Go to it. Dillard's, Coles, Belk's, Riches, Mason's, and find anything made in America. Find them help us help find them jobs. Fun. We're going to go to another find subject jobs here in just people. a moment. Okay? Will you do that? We got Can two you other help subjects find jobs? to get to. Subject number Can you two. Help subject find subject number two. This is a question for Dennis. <laughs> I'm gonna, I need somebody to hit. <laughs> Dennis, Dennis, we have seen myriad cases of gay couples yeah. approaching qu Christian right. wedding vendors right. across the country and baiting them to service their weddings. Right. We're, you know, these are florists and bakers right. and things like right. that. And when these Christian vendors refuse the service of a gay wedding... It's too early. too early. Put the money away. It's too early. They're it's usually amazing. sued it's by the... We don't take credit cards. They're right. usually sued by the, by the gay couple. And right. what usually happens from, from these lawsuits <laughs> is that the gay couples are found, to, are found liable for discrimination, and they get a judgment against them, and they get put out of business. Right. So the question is, is that a proper result, or should there be more protection... For people who deny service to others based on their religious beliefs. One of the things that the people that settled this country came to this country for way back in the Mayflower days, the number one reason was religious freedom. That is being lost today. And it's, religious freedom is being eroded. Religious freedom re means you've got the right to practice your religion. And if it's against your religion to make a cake for a gay couple because you personally don't believe in that lifestyle, I think that's a perfectly good reason not to do it. And the other side of that coin is just the other day a church got sued because they wouldn't marry a gay couple. Okay, so they're going to try to undermine Christianity, the liberals and the socialists and the communists. They're not going to attack us from overseas. They're getting us from the inside out like a rotten apple. And if we don't stop this and with this upcoming election, we're in for a lot more problems. So. Okay, Jerry, you're okay. All right, this is the sit calmly. I just took a quailu during the break, and I'm fine. I'm relaxing. Just one? Were the Jesus alive, our Gandhi, who was a racist. of recent history? Gandhi was a racist. May I? You're interrupting me. You're, you're okay. absolutely right. You're, no, I am right. And give me a dollar back for <laughs> <laughs> there is no God of any of the worthy religions who have their own God that would judge you. I thought, and when I was born in North Carolina, and where everybody was a Gentile, judge ye not lest ye be. Jesus was so sweet. Would Jesus go to a church and say, don't do that to this loving couple who in this ugly world have found each other to love? Jesus also. Wait, 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 wait. No, I'm finished? asking. I'm no, finished? I'm asking the question. Yeah, I want to pose that. Would Jesus say, "Who you worship and so much?" Would he say, "Oh no, they're queer, and you don't want to do anything for them, though they happen to be humans, they happen to serve in Vietnam, would they, but they're ugly, so we discard them." Would they do? Would Jesus do? That? I'm not a biblical scholar, but, but I you're do. You're a Christian, but I do know that it says in the Bible, if a man sleeps with another man, that's an. A, Aberration? Abomination. Abomination. And that's in the Bible. Leviticus. And I do believe in the I Bible. I think you choose. The Bible has a lot. And also it says that we shall have slaves in the Bible. It says that. So do you go for that or do you pick and choose because it makes you feel good and you can judge? No, no, no. Person? I'm just saying what it says. I'm just saying what you feel, that, not that, what that feels. The Bible what, is what my, guiding, my guiding scripture to... Well, uh, sometimes I trust humans more than I do any Bible. So you don't believe in the Bible? I don't believe in the... I believe in humans more than the Bible. Do you believe yes, in the Torah? I know you're Jewish. No, I don't believe in everything. The so Torah you're, you're not, you're, the you're Torah's agnostic. got some pretty un, unpleasant okay. things, so you're as agnostic. does the Christian Bible. So I believe in humans. So you're a do-gooder, but don't believe in anything? I believe in humans. I think we can make the changes. Yeah. We are doing this in a real tangible way. Mm -hmm. We are blood and guts. I don't know if you were in Vietnam. I know I was in, not Vietnam, Canada. I was in Canada, right. but it was a tough place to be. I know. Okay. I thought, Hockey was a tough game to I watch. I know it. I know it. You done with that is, or you want to retain me? I want to hear what you got to say. Okay. 
I know you're going to agree with him. No, I'm not going to agree with him. You retain me. <laughs> no, okay. I, if you he retained me, I, I would have agreed I, with him. I do okay. what I do, whatever you guys do, just like you guys do. Okay. I love going to my shelter four days a week, and I help, and I touch these people. And sometimes they smell. There's no place to go to a bathroom. People look at them askance because they don't look like Buckhead, but they're your humans and my humans. That's who they are, and we need to help. So, so do they need to help? So yeah, makes you feel good. We're on the, we're good. We're on the go ahead. I, I retain thing, my right? attorney. Okay. Go ahead. I think it's a. I think it is an abomination to force somebody to do something that is against their religious beliefs. Um, and for example, and, and it's the, Dennis brought up a case which is even worse than the florist and the and the um, the florist, and the, baker. the flower man. No, no, we're talking about forcing a, a Christian, Christian human. forcing a, a Christian uh, pastor. To perform a gay wedding when he thinks that wedding that a marriage is only between a man and a woman, that is a violation of that person's free exercise of religion. So really, what I see this as, uh, you, you have two competing interests, right? You have the right of somebody not to be discriminated against, which is a real right in this country, and then you have the right of somebody to to live a life that's true to their religion, which something's got to give. Okay. Yes, because in in real religion, in real religion, you are giving and not taking. Look, I don't have to do that. You would give. What religion I learned as a young one, we gave. We didn't take and stand on ceremony. You give. They're lovely people. Well, we should be glad that two people find you themselves. But if it violates my right of live. choice, where does that give you the right to violate my right of choice? You're not, and you're you not the arbiter you of what real religion is. Well, of course is. I can do what yeah, I want. That's a free country. Is, I would suggest to those people, get away from those people. They're dark age humans. No, no, we're, talking, we're talking about go, go forcing find, a minister I know to perform a gay flower. wedding. I know enlightened flower makers, and where I live in Midtown, they would be glad to service your Do wedding. you think a minister or a rabbi should be forced by the government to no, perform a gay no, wedding? No, I don't. Why? Why? Because then it's their right to be as ugly and as humane as they choose to be. Well, but, so you, but you agree that they have that right? I do agree they have the right. Okay, so well, then why does you force somebody to make but to they make don't them have flowers a right in the cake? It's the same me. thing. I just, I'm saying, I'm agreeing with you. They have a right to be as ugly and as selfish and inhumane. It's not ugly or Wait, selfish, it's I'm right. saying those are my words, but they have a right to be that way. The, the left always thinks their rights are being violated, well, but never gives a thought about our rights. Because we're here rights. for a good long time because of people that are thinking like you. We are here for a long Listen, time. Listen, people that think my, like me have fought and died in the wars and that have so made this country you do, free. And so you think I have two uncles that would be liberal, both shot down in the Second World War. They would be liberal today. We were raised that way. You yeah. give more than you take. It's give. A, this it's is not a about, giving. It's not about you make giving. it a little sweeter this is when not you about leave giving. here. It's it a, is no. absolutely about but giving. But it sounds like you it's actually getting, agree with Dennis, though. So I, you agree I, I with agree that, that, that they should have the right not to make flowers for a gay wedding. You way. do? Okay. Absolutely. So they really, they really, okay. Don't, 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 don't really have an issue. Go back, back to their village. On to the next issue. You don't like it, but you agree. Exactly. I don't like it. There's plenty of villages they can live in. All right. So we got another subject? You should have retained me. I had a better argument than you did. Arguments don't always win. Humanity, if we live, is going to overcome all the arguments and all the intellectuals that have these arguments like this. I, I'm, because I like we have changed. Me when you because what you didn't allow is at one time blacks, and we have a producer here, it has to be black, their people were subdued and He's subverted. And My no, people not didn't you. come to this country Al, until 1900. Albert, Albert. They weren't even there in the Civil I'm talking War. About, I didn't mention white, I mentioned a I black never man. <laughs> Ask them how they felt about these lovely white people that there was a law they weren't legal. Do you understand? But so we changed change. laws. Wait, we changed laws because of humanity. That's what changes. That is the righter thing to do. All right, now we're on the last subject. We're on the last subject. I'm going to throw you guys roll. a curve. I'm going to throw you guys a curve, okay? All right. What's going on in the news, one of the things that's going on in the news today is um, Apple, I'm drinking juice. The, uh, the, the high-tech company, right? It's a Fortune 5 company. Yes. They're being compelled. Right now there's a, a federal court decision that's compelling Apple to hack into their own system uh, because, uh, their own uh, cellular phone system, because the there was a, a telephone that was recovered at the scene of the um, terrorist act in right. San Bernardino, mm -hmm. and the FBI, probably with good reason, believes that there may be some other information on that phone which could lead them to another terrorist or another terrorist plot. And so, but the problem with it is that it's, it's encrypted. Mm -hmm. And Apple sold their phones to its customers with the promise that, It'll never be broken into by anybody because we encrypted it. Even Apple, even us, even we cannot break into this phone. Right. Mm -hmm. And now the federal government is saying, forget, forget all that, Apple. Now we're going to force you 
to decrypt your own encryption because we think there might be helpful information on this phone. It's, and again, I just want to point out that they have the phone. This is not a matter of responding to a subpoena and giving the phone over. They have the phone. Now they want Apple to create something that doesn't exist and to use their resources to create a, a method to break into this phone. Should the federal government have the power to make Apple do that? Dennis. Okay. Number one is a, quote, former Apple shareholder. I had stock in Apple until they started to fight the federal government about this particular issue, and I then sold my stock, okay, as a little form of protest. Because this is another perfect example of political correctness that could cost someone their life, and I'll explain. If Apple does not comply with the request that the FBI has made to take one little telephone and open it up so they can see if this crazy couple that killed all those people out there in California knows anything about another plot on the horizon, I think that's a perfectly logical thing to do. Because what if there's a plot out there to drop an atomic bomb or let a dirty bomb go in New York or L.A. or someplace? It could very well be on there, or even a chemical attack. It could cost people their lives. And Apple, if they're really good Americans and care, they should always err on the side of safety and concern for American citizens. Okay, we're not asking them to open up their thing to, you know, every telephone and all of this blown up out of proportion stuff that the left would like you to believe. All right, Sorry. let me ask you. By the way, I'm 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 78. I'm playing, I'm reading the Koran. I'm reading the Old Testament. The Christian. I'm I'm cramming for finals. Okay, so I'm not anything <laughs> a left or right. The deal is, I happen to agree with he you. He believes in everything. I, I know. I happen to agree with you, Dennis. You, you agree with Dennis? Oh I my agree God. with Dennis. Oh, wait, there's something wrong, wrong here. No, Matt, wait, come and jump in. No, yeah. no, with, with, you the need caveat, to with the caveat, with the caveat, if these people are bright enough to be have sixty or seventy billion dollars in their pocket from an Apple creation, they ought to be able to have it. So the FBI could go into a phone, not mine. I don't want them in my phone. And you don't want them in your phone. Well, I'm not I know a terrorist. about you. Well, you're a right winger. But the idea is that, is that what we do, no, what we do is make it so <laughs> these brilliant people can create. They go to that phone and that and not mine. I would because, really like because, Matt's take on I'm, this. I'm retaining myself. He's retaining himself. No, well, I disagree <laughs> with both of you guys. <laughs> tell me. I okay, want to hear I'll tell you why. It's a big deal. I'm dying to hear this. Question. To it's me, true. this is not so much a question of privacy as much as it is a question of liberty. Liberty. Okay? We're talking about forcing a company to do work. They're forcing them yeah. to use their resources to pay. They have to do this at their own expense. We don't know how hard it is to decrypt their own encryption. This could take them weeks or months. But, wait, but, wait, let me finish. Go ahead. Okay, so now, really what we're talking about is indentured servitude. Now, oh, the boy. federal government gets to tell a company that it has mm. to do something. And why? Look at the standard that they use. We think that there may, be, there may be information on that phone that may lead us to another terrorist or, as you surmise, a nuclear bomb or something like that. We <laughs> think, I like oh my to God. think big. Now, if that's the standard, <laughs> we're all in a lot of trouble, Dennis, because and uh, you know, as a conservative, you need to look at this part of the equation. If you don't trust the, the federal government, as I don't, okay, yeah. imagine all the possibilities where that very flimsy mercurial standard can be changed and exploited to force people to do things. You know what? Imagine um, we say, you know, we have a national security objective. We think that we don't have enough ball bearings. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough ball bearings. We think we need more ball bearings in order to be competitive in a certain type of combat situation. So I'm going to go over to this company over here, which has the ability to manufacture ball bearings, even though that's not what they want to do, and even though it's going to cost them a lot of money. We're going to force them to manufacture ball bearings. Why? Because we think it might help us in our speculative of uh, uh, national security interests. If you we were, yeah, if we were in a declared war, there would be some laws uh, available to make companies do that. In fact, they did that in World War II. But on your issue, isn't asking Apple uh, to do this one phone, this one time only, no, because similar to somebody, an attorney taking a deposition from somebody or having to uh, respond to a subpoena, isn't that very similar? Why should somebody? Why should the federal government be able to tell somebody that they have to perform? Because work? it's a, it's a, it's it's a national security issue. It's totally no, no, opposite it, it of everything be. you've said. It Dennis. might be. So you err on the, you err on the side of caution. I would rather err on the side of freedom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so wait, uh, that's, that, that's, I, I would err on the side of caution. Well, listen, you know, you look at Commerce Clause jurisprudence, right? Show over. Commerce Clause. No, we have a couple minutes. Actually, we have plenty of time. <laughs> 
Commerce Clause jurisprudence, right? It's basically, you look at the Commerce Clause of the Constitution, and it says the federal government should have the right to regulate commerce between the states, okay? There's one line in the Constitution, and look what the, what the case law has evolved from that. They said that based on the, that one sentence, that the federal government can regulate anything mm-hmm. that, ha- that may have an impact on interstate commerce any action or even inaction if you're not doing something and that might cause an impact on interstate commerce the federal government can regulate it but wait let me just finish now that if you take that standard and now you apply it to this and you say that anything that may that may advance a national security objective you can force somebody into into slave labor that is a treacherous precipice that you're on but, because it could be exploited and it will be exploited. But if you err on the side of freedom and a bomb does blow up and kills a lot of people, you're talking about human life being lost. That, to me, is a defining factor. What the makes potential you think that for a, human well, life being lost <laughs> is not prevalent in a commerce thing, Look, it, but it is prevalent in this one situation I, with I, Apple. I would say that if the standard was not whether there was a speculative national security objective, but instead there was a much n- more narrow, ascertainable threat. That is to say that they knew for, to a moral certainty that there was, let's say, a code in this computer that could deactivate a known ticking time bomb. Yeah. If you knew for a fact that that was going to happen, I think it would be more but palatable. They no, they don't. But no. if they did, I would say that's the standard. If you knew to a moral certainty but that you were going to get that kind of information, then maybe you can uh, conscript somebody, because that's what we're talking about, but, but conscripting them. But when you're talking about speculative benefits, well, we don't know what's on there, but and, and, and based on the fact that it might be this, but we're going to force you to perform this work. You're turning a factual thing into a hypothetical thing. No, it's well, already so hypothetical. <laughs> it's already hypothetical because you don't know what's on the phone. You have no idea what's on the phone. It could be a bomb. And there you go. That's hypothetical. <laughs> I'm dealing with that hypothetical, okay? I'm not creating hypothetical. Now, let me tell you something else. You understand that this, that this is possibly in violation of the 13th Amendment to the Constitution, which prevents the government or prevents indentured servitude, okay? It's also in violation of the Fifth Amendment of the, con- of the Constitution, which uh, is, uh, prevents takings by the government. You have a, a, a company that has sold millions and millions of its products to customers on the promise that no one will be able to break into this phone, not even us. And now the federal government's going to say, you're going to have to break that promise. In fact, we're going to make you, of all people, break that promise. You're going to decrypt that phone yeah. because we might think we think we might find some interesting things on this phone. Well, now, do you think that that's going to affect their business, Dennis? Well, yeah, probably. But let me, let me say this, folks. I am going to take back all of the money that I gave to this supposed attorney next to me. <laughs> supposed? <laughs> Can I make one and comment? because Jerry is 20 years older than anybody here, Can I'm going to let him have the last word. word. One comment. If any of you <laughs> in this lovely audience, and I appreciate being on the show, Dennis, for real, it's a great concept you created here. We have fun. We laugh. If any of you have female genitalia <laughs> or male genitalia, but more important than that, animals have that too, the lower life forms. If you happen to be a How human, we get on this subject? and you happen to live, I live in Midtown for 60 years, and you fall in love with your heart and your soul, with a dog? I will be glad to get flowers for you and play piano music. I happen to be an excellent piano player. Call me. I'll be glad to perform oh. at that wedding okay. and give you the flowers. That's my So that's what a pianist is. Jerry, Jerry's always been known as a big pianist. <laughs> <laughs> On that expect, happy note, folks. I would expect no less from, <laughs> we, a, we, from a police officer we, or we, a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> folks, we've had a lot of fun tonight. Uh, we get a little passionate, but that's part of the show. I think that's the draw. You're looking at a show done by the, quote, common man uh, perspective. Big and I, I think that there's a good uh, possibility that uh, with your help, and your feedback that we may take this a step or two further as we go along, and we certainly welcome your comments. And uh, uh, thanks for joining us tonight, and please give us some feedback, okay? And uh, we're going to try to do this again uh, next month sometime. We haven't come up with a date yet, but there will be a press release uh, probably in the next few weeks on a website called No Strings Attached. So please uh, Google it and watch out for us, and uh, thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.